Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with uh, Israeli News Live. And this video here, Revelation chapter 7, I'm going to be talking about Revelation chapter 7, as well as Revelation 14, 144,000. And I know a lot of different doctrinal opinions on 144,000. Won't get into all those uh, on, on this, but uh, uh, again, I would probably say that this is not a doctrinal issue. So, if, you know, if you disagree with what I teach on this, it's perfectly all right. Uh, we can kind of thank Dr. June Knight for kind of pulling me in this direction on this because she's been after me for a while to speak about it. I kind of let the cat out of the bag uh, when I was there at her her conference uh, just recently, and, uh, and we might even be able to make her ribbon cutting ceremony this Friday. She's there in Southern Tennessee, and uh, so we're hoping to be there for that. Uh, but anyway, no, no, I can't say I will for sure, but we're going to try to. So anyway, I'm going to speak about that today, but before I do, um, let me let you know I'm about to speak on a major topic, but it will not air here on Israeli News Live. It's going to be on Fact News Network. Uh, but let me remind you to also to probably be on Brand New Tube. This is our channel here on Brand New Tube. We haven't submitted our graphics yet for that, but uh, Brand New Tube, very good platform, uh, growing very rapidly. And they got some issues out, but they are working on those. So keep that in mind. iConnectFX.com. Also be sure, get signed up in there. They're working on fixing the issues there. There are some little issues. I understand that, but uh, they are working to fix that. Um, you know, they've got, uh, you know, a lot of different people on there. And even in trending, we stay up near the top on this as well uh, on the platform. In fact, we got quite a few videos in the trending section there. So, but, but we're growing with iConnect, and I think it'll be a blessing to you. But the subject I'm going to be getting into is going to be the Messiah of Israel. And I'm not, when I put here, Yehuda Glick, he's running for president. I'm not necessarily advocating that he is that Messiah figure that they're about to reveal. But I have wondered if he is not going to be their Davidic uh, Messiah figure. Uh, I don't have anything to kind of back that up. It's just kind of a thought there. But I do know that Israel is soon to reveal their Josephic Messiah candidate. Well, let me tell you something. He's undergoing tremendous uh, scrutiny right now. and uh, But he's been around for a little while. And they have uh, worked very difficult, uh, uh, very very diligently to keep his identity hidden. But uh, this is the man, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but I do know he's about to be, re be uh, made known to the world. But this is the man that they're going to choose for their Josephic Messiah. Again, my opinion on that, I, like I said, I want to clarify this. I could be wrong. I'll be bringing this out on Israeli News Live. I'm not going to say anything here because this is a very touchy subject. But you can see the article here on Reuters uh, and you can see what's highlighted in blue. If you read about this, you'll understand why I kind of lean towards this. Or maybe you might not understand it, but I'll explain it over there on the other channel there. Let's get busy, though, with this here, this passage is here. Um, this is something that, like I said, it is controversial. Subject, 144,000. Again, thank Dr. June Knight for me doing this because she kind of kept pushing me for a long time. Brother, who are the 144,000? And I'm sure that June and, and her son, uh, Brock, who's a minister, have uh, their own views on this, maybe even different with mine. Uh you know, there's a lot of views. Some believe it's the little children that were killed by uh, Herod during uh, the time of Jesus. Can't be them because they're not the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, although I do know that all the tribes were in Israel come the day of Pentecost. Can't say when they actually came back, but they were there during the crucifixion. I know that. We see that in the book of Acts, clearly identified, Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Uh, when Peter is speaking, Paul writes there that he said, uh, and I'll just quote that for, for, for the sake here, but we're here on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, but we get to verse 36. And therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. All the house of who? The house of Israel. That God hath made that same Jesus whom you have what? crucified, both Lord and Christ. So all 12 tribes were in Israel at that time. 
Wow. All right. So uh, that's very important to know. But I don't think they were there during the time of Herod. That's where I just kind of have a little, a little question mark right there. So I don't think that's right. Jehovah's Witness doctrine, they think they're the 144,000. Well, that's completely as false, in my opinion. Uh, you know, so not to slam on them. There's a lot of good people that are Jehovah's Witnesses. So, you know, they, they, they mean well. Uh, they would probably make great Noahides too, by the way, because, <laughs> oh, well, I, I won't go into that one right there. But anyway, another subject, another day. We're going to get into this very deeply today, though, and I think it'll be a blessing to you. Let's start right off. Revelation chapter 7. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000, and it goes all through the tribes. The tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad, uh, the tribe of Aser, uh, the tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Simeon, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Ishkar, the tribe of Zubalan, the tribe of Joseph, and the tribe of Benjamin. All of them were sealed 12,000, right? So, Trying to save time in reading, instead of reading every single word there. After this, I behold and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. And by the way, the word kindreds right there, all right, that's the exact same word as tribe, all right? Let me just prove that to you. Let's go over here and let's take and let's run down to Revelation uh, I want you to be able to see this. I want you to know this for a fact. And um, all right, then we have the, you know, of the multitude. Here we go. Here we go. Kindred. There we go. Right there. Offshoot. That is a race, a kindred, a tribe. All right. It is G5443. Now, let me just show you that. Let's go right here where we talk about we're still tribe of Joseph. There it is again, G55, five, five, excuse me, 5443, the Greek word 5443, and that is the word for tribe, all right? So when John is reading that about this great number uh, of the all the nations, of all nations, it should be, and tribes and people and tongues stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand, and crowd with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. All right. Now, and all the angels stood around about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne of faces, saying, Amen, blessed and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power might be unto God forever and ever and ever. Amen. All right. And one of the elders answered, saying to me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they? Watch what John says. And I said unto him, sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation, have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are there before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Now notice, John did not know who they were. He didn't know. He didn't know who that group was. He knew who these were of the tribes of Israel. But the odd thing is, is that when it says right here of all nations, there's a number, a number, no man could number how many they were. There were so many. They were from all the nations and not kindreds, tribes and people in tongues. So they were Jews amongst them as well of the tribes of Israel. He ain't talking about Indians and Native American Indians. I'll tell you that straight up. He's talking about the nations, the tribes, the tribes of Israel, but he didn't recognize them. And then people, 
I wonder how many people ever catch that. He knows who the tribes of Israel are. You know, when I was sharing this with my wife, I shared this just weeping. Because I realized, I said to my wife, I said, do you realize why John knows who the 12 tribes are, but he doesn't know who the others are, even though the others of this great multitude, which no man could number of all the nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, why doesn't he recognize them? Because there are Jews amongst them as well, but he doesn't recognize them because the angel asked him, you know, he says right there, the uh, you know, saying, because the angel asked him, saying to him, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and, and where do they come from? And John says, sir, you know, he didn't know. But the others he did know. Why did he know who the others were? You see, keep in mind now, friends, you can't take the book of Revelation and think that everything that John wrote is all in the future. That's not always the case. All right? When John wrote about the churches of Asia Minor, he wrote about churches back then. The reason why John knew who they were is because he was there on the day of Pentecost. He was there when Peter addressed and said, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Not only did he was, see, John was part of, on the day of Pentecost, of the 120 that were sitting in that upper room. He was one of the 120 in the upper room that was filled with the Holy Ghost. They came out and spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them an utterance. And he knew that there were not Jews. The word Jews is not written there in the Greek language. It is Judeans. There were dwelling at Jerusalem, Judeans, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Remember Isaiah the prophet? Paul quotes him in Romans. You know, when he says, though Israel... Though, though Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet only a remnant would return. And so for, for, the, for the multitude, only a remnant would return. All right? And when it was noised abroad, the, the multitude came together. They were all amazed, marvel, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? They weren't born in Judea although they were Judeans because their ancestors were Judeans, but they were from Perithians, they were Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, uh, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. See, even Gentiles were among them. And again, that word is Judeans. So yeah, so some of them were living in, in, in the modern or in the state of Israel back in those days. Cretes, Arabians. They said, we do, hear, we do hear the wonderful works of God. And then finally, in verse 36, after Peter gives this great uh, salutation about what's going on and about Jesus Christ and how he died for their sins, right? And he talks about how the prophet Joel, you know, spoke about these things in vision and how that these things would happen. Then in verse 36, he says to them, he identifies who they were, who the multitude was. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that our God made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Then their hearts were pricked, right? Their hearts were pricked greatly. So how does John know then who they are, but he doesn't know that other multitude? It's because John was there on the day of Pentecost. He was there when they began to weep and they began to cry. You know, Zechariah writes that they would, they would separate each one to their own families and they would weep and they would mourn for days as a family that lost their only son. And I used to teach that that was a future event as well because Zechariah talks about, you know, they're not in a tribal order. They're in, 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 in their family names, you know, so I thought that was for a future time. 
You know, you had, you had, uh, what is that? Zechariah 10, I believe it is, or chapter 10, maybe it's chapter 12. Um, let me see if I can find that just real quick here. Um, we just kind of share that with you because see, there's one thing about Zechariah that kind of threw me off. Let me just see if this is it here. Um, no, not, not Zechariah 10, maybe it's Zechariah 12. And that day the Lord should have been have it. Okay, here we go. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace supplicated, they shall look upon, see, there it is. They shall look upon, look unto me because they have thrust him through. And they shall mourn. All right. Now, what, what, what he says, I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me because they have thrust him through. And then King James says, they have pierced him. And they shall mourn for him as one that mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness uh, for his firstborn. And Acts tells you, house of Israel, that same Jesus whom you have crucified both is both Lord and Christ. He's, he's not the Lord, but he's the Mashiach. And Zechariah says they're going to mourn over that. And that day there should be a great mourning in Jerusalem as in the morning of Hadad Rimon in the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart. Now see, one thing always stumped me, even though I thought this is the future years ago, you had the house of David the house, the house of Nathan, right? There you are, house of David. You also had the house of Nathan. They're from the tribe of Judah. They're them and their wives apart. The family of the house of Levi. Right? House of Levi and their families apart. Shemites. Why the Shemites? Because see, Shemai was the very, very man that rejected, and he's a Benjamite. He's the one that spit on David when David was leaving. Remember, David did just like Jesus. He sat on the hill, the Mount of Olives, and he wept over Jerusalem. Just like Jesus did in, in Matthew, what is that? Matthew, I think, 23. And he says, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. He said, your house is left desolate until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And Shemai did to David, just like Benjamin did to Jesus when he was here. They spit upon him. But later Shemai comes back. See, Notice that. David hadn't died. David came back. And when he came down to the river, Shimei was the first one to meet him there. And he said, Lord, forgive me. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. See, there's your, he was weeping and mourning for what he did to David. How much more than do you think these Benjamites in this day? But here's what confused me. All the families that remain, every family apart, their wives apart. See? See? All the families remain. Every family apart, their wives apart. There's the house of Israel. I didn't catch that. I, I I thought maybe, okay, maybe this was the Samaritans or something. That was my thought originally. But it wasn't. It was Acts shows you that it was the house of Israel. So rather than name it at all, it just tells you the families. All right. Remember the scripture also says that God would save the tents. Let's do, just pull it up. I mean, look, listen. Tents of Judah first, right? Tents of Judah. All right. Or where is it at? Zachari there we go. Zechariah 12, 7. Oh, it's in the very, very, it's in the very chapter I'm already in. Here it is. Look at here. Watch this. The Lord all shall save the tents of Judah first at the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem be not magnified above Judah. I should have got it. And that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that stumbleth among them at the day that shall be as David, as the house of David, shall be as a godlike being, as the angel of the Lord before them. See, and it's exactly what he did on the day of Pentecost. It was the house of Judah that received the Holy Spirit first. 
The 120 in the upper room was only the remnant of the house of Judah. All right? And so when John knowed who they were, but he didn't know this other number. See, because what happened? The gospel of Jesus Christ ends up going to both Jew and Gentile after that first. And what did Jesus say when he was here? Oh, my gosh. Well, look here. You know, some people say, they say, oh, you just got the book of Acts about the house of Israel. Okay, what, what did Jesus say? Law, sheep. All right, let, let, let me just show something to you, right? What did Jesus say to them, right? You you don't believe that the house of Israel wasn't already gathering back? Matthew 10, 6. All right, so let's quickly, let's take and let's put this in there. All right, uh, we, we got to do this. And I, I know it's not the right one, but we'll, we'll pull it up real quick. So we get over here in this little thing here, Matthew 10, 6, right? Matthew chapter 10. All right, let's go down there to verse 6. All right. Let's just, let's just highlight a few of these here. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, go not in the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils for you, you receive freely give. Where were they going? The house of Israel. And now there's this big movement right now to bring uh, uh, Christians that have already believing in Jesus Christ and they want to bring them to Israel and they tell them, oh, you got to you got to repent. You got to repent because you were part of the destruction of the temple. They got, you know, they got this big thing going on, Shapir and them, about, oh, yeah, repent for the, for the ninth of Av because of the destruction of the temple. No, you don't. You repent for the destruction of the temple, you'll be spitting in the face of God himself who brought judgment on that. Jesus Christ, God, a body has now prepared me. And yet you're gonna, they're gonna build a third temple and evangelicals and all these nar people up there, they're gonna be sitting there sounding the tunes and praises of, of whatever God they serve and they're gonna do right there in that temple and blaspheme the, the very message of Jesus Christ that he brought. And when Shapir and them all tell you and everything, you know, this is the remnant of the house of Israel and everything. You got to come back up underneath these rabbis. That's a lie out of hell. The house of Israel came home. They talk about, oh, the lost house, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They got to still come home. They were bringing them home 2000 years ago. And not only did they bring them home, but John recognized who they were. Don't you realize that? When they, after on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls came in that day. I think that's exactly right. Let's look back over here at the book of Acts here, right? You know, they testified that and gladly, okay, they received it steadfastly in prayers and they continued to bring him bread. They were, they were doing communion, right? Fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed together had, had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, to everyone uh, man had need and they continued daily, right? See, um, I know I thought it was right in here somewhere, but I know that there was, I think on that first day, there were 3,000 souls added just the first day alone after they were baptized. Something like that. Somewhere, I forget where that's at, but I know that's somewhere in there we get, we get how they're added into there, right? And so what was it? John knew who they were. He was there, he was hugging their neck and he was weeping and crying because why? They were seeing the greatest miracle on the planet come to pass. And they talk about, you know, they talk about, you know, well, Jesus couldn't be, this is what these rabbis say, Jesus couldn't have been a Messiah because he's supposed to bring peace and everything and there's going to be no war. They, there wasn't no war among them. There was peace. And the gospel began to sweep the entire planet. And John was there. That's how John knew what tribe they belonged to. You know, as he began to hug this one and that one there, and he would say to him, oh, you know, you're from, you're from Asher, or you're from Zubalon, or you're from uh, the tribe of Joseph, you're from the tribe of Manasseh. By the way, Manasseh place, uh, replaced Dan, if you'll notice that. Dan wasn't in that mix there, was he? And Ephraim, Ephraim actually comes in under his father, Joseph, into that tribe right there. But I found that interesting right there. Dan's not there. 
And by the way, that doesn't mean that all the Jews in the state of Israel today, the modern state of Israel, that they're the tribe of Dan. Although I do believe that some of them are the tribe of Dan. Because remember, the scripture says when it writes about Dan over there, when, when Jacob speaks about his son, he said, you're, a, you're an adder, you're a serpent, by the way. But we can't forget, though, they still have to have some of those original Levites that had mingled their seed amongst over there when they were in Babylon, according to the scripture that we read about uh, there. They had mingled their seed there in, in the book of Ezra. That's right there. See, they had, they had gone and mingled themselves in. Um, where are we at here? Book of Ezra. Nope, I'm sorry. That's, that's, I'm in the wrong one. Uh, I think that's Ezekiel. Let's see. Here we go. Ezra right here. Ezra 9. The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even to the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, and Jebusites, and the Ammonites, and Moabites, Egyptians, and the Amorites. They have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Brought in Nephilim children is what they did. Which, by the way, see, they have taken of their daughters for themselves. And then you wonder why in Revelation 14, for example, what does it say about the 144,000? Well, let's read this here. I'm going to show you some beautiful things here. Bless your heart, I believe. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion with 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and the voice of a great thunder, Jesus Christ, no doubt. Then I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Mm. Who was the one that wrote the Psalms to begin with? It was David, and he, every song he, he wrote, well, not every one of them, but a lot of the songs he wrote, was he was talking about the coming of the Messiah. Well, they had a new song because they had met the Messiah, right? These are they which were not, what? Defiled with women. They were virgins. These are those that fall by him whithersoever he got, and these were redeemed from among men, being what? The first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Oh my gosh, do you not see that? Uh, listen, women ain't bad. Why would he say they were not defiled with women? Okay, you have to understand. You got to go back to Ezra. See, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so that the Holy Seed have mingled themselves with the people. So the Levites that had come back into the land, you know, I remember one minister, I was talking to him about this, and he said, well, brother, no, because they put away their wives. Sure they did. That was their penance, right? They put away their wives. And I said, well, where did they go, brother? He said, they went back to their peoples there. Well, you forget when, when, uh, when Cyrus sent the people back to their lands, he sent who? He sent the Perzites, Hittites, Canaanites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites back to their land as well. And they had already slept with them women. And I'm going to prove to you in just a moment that these were the very Nephilim that the Bible speaks about. So they sent them back to their land. So, And where were they all living at, these abominable people right here? They were living in the state of Israel 2,000 years ago, glory to God, except for the Egyptians. He sent them back to their land. Egyptians went back to their land, but the Moabites, Canaanites, Ammonites, Amorites, they were all living in that whole region right there. So when he sent these Nephilim children and their families back with them, priests might have divorced them, but they went right back to Israel. And Jesus was able to identify them when he stood there and the Pharisees that had taken over along with the Sadducees that had taken over the temple. We know according to Matthew, let's just, let's just go ahead. We're going to bust things. Let's just bust it all up right now. Let's just go right in there and bust it all up. Let's tell it like it is. Matthew chapter 23. Glory to God. And don't forget, Jesus said, you know, actually in the Hebrew Matthew, when he talks about them and he says, you know, how can you escape the damnation of hell? See, here we go. Pharisees, hypocrites. Oh, they're all hypocrites, right? Boy, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, you shove the kingdom of heaven against men for night and neither going yourselves. Now that you suffer them, you them that are entering to go in. <laughs> Why? They're false doctrines, right? What did Jesus say in verse 23? Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, for you pay the tithe of mint, commune and 
and, and all that, and omit the weight or matters of the law, matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These all you'd have done and not to leave the other undone. Well, they might have been religious, but we get on a little further down. We get on a little further down here where we get here. What does Jesus say to them? Fill you up the measure of your fathers. Oh, they could say they was from Abraham. Why? Because, you know, the, the, you know, listen, they could say that because their daddies, their daddies were Jewish men. They were Levites. So they can say they were from Abraham. But what did Jesus say? Fill up the measure of your fathers. You are what? Serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? And let me just say this in all fairness to them. In the Hebrew Matthew, he said, except you turn in repentance. And I want to tell you something now. That goes for anybody that listens to this message. Because I had a lady recently, she said to me, she's very concerned. She said, you know, Steve, she said, I kind of wonder if my husband's not a Nephilim. And so I said to her, I said, sister, I said, listen. She said, what should I do? I said, you should pray for him. I said, because, you know, for one, we really, we don't know who's who. I said, and I said to her, I said, you know, Jesus talked about those Pharisees and how that they were vipers. He said, how can you escape the damnation of hell? I said, in the Hebrew, Matthew, he goes on to say, except you turn in repentance. I said, remember, they had a mother and a father. And one of them might be a devil, but that doesn't necessarily, in that case there, it wasn't both was devils. You know, I said, so the thing is, is you, you know, repent. See, repent. Yeah, I realize it might be a very narrow, hard way to get there, but you know, God is merciful. We don't never know, all right? And we don't know the answer to those things. So you ask God to have mercy, and if you feel like you have somebody you know like that, pray for them. Only God knows who's who and what's what, all right? So through the blood of Jesus Christ is salvation. There's no other way but through him. That's why I say, you're not helping my people. When I, when I say my people, you know, I come from that ancestry that's, you know, but the thing is, you're not going to help them by sitting there going along with some uh, cultic state or some, some demonic move for building a third temple or, or, or something like that, you know, or to, or to sit there and say, well, oh, they got their Messiah, praise God. No, it's not praise God. Jesus Christ was their Messiah. And until you get them to recognize that, they're lost as lost can be. You, If you got Jewish friends with love, see, with love, share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe it's God will do something for them. All right? Now, so where was we at here? We were talking over here where they said there, um, they sung that new song. They were not defiled with women. See, why were they not defiled with women? Because like in Ezra, they had married into the daughters of this lands here, these people of this lands. Let me show you who those lands were so you understand what I'm saying. I forget what I got here. So let me, let me kind of look where we're at here because um, I'm not for sure which scriptures I got. Okay, Leviticus 18. All right, that's a good one there too. Let me go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, I believe we're in chapter, yeah, chapter 18. Okay. Um, let's see what I have in here besides that one there. I, there's a reason for that too. I to let's see this great fire anymore that I don't. That's, that's not the reason I wanted that there. Let me see. No, okay, in the book of Numbers. All right, this is when God sent out the spies, the 12 spies, right? And out of the 12 spies, there were only two, Caleb and Joshua, that stood the test of time when it come to this. That's kind of like the 12 apostles, but in this case here, they wasn't all getting it together right, right? Okay. But anyway, it says here, it brought back a word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They came back, they were showing them the fruit of the land, right? Uh, and so they said, and they told him and said, we came into the land whither thou sent us and surely it floweth the milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. And how be it the people that dwell in the land are fierce and the cities are fortified and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there and Amalek dwelt in the land of the south and the Hittite, what? The Hittite, Jebusite, Amorite dwelt in the mountains and the Canaanite dwelleth by the sea along by the side of the Jordan. All right, now remember, Cyrus sent all those people back to their lands to serve their gods, right? That's what he says. That's what he says on the Cyrus cylinder. He sent them all back. Not just the Jews, but all those people and to serve their gods. 
And when the 12 spies went down there to spy out the land that they were going to take, we find out that Amalek dwelt in that land of the south. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak, A-N-A-K, Anak, not Enoch, Anak, there. And Amalek was dwelling in the south. The Hittite, the Jebusite, the Amorite dwelt in the mountains, and the Canaanite dwelt by the sea and along the side of the Jordan. All right, now let me just point that out so you get that first before we go any further. Hang on, let me just, let's go back to Ezra. Who was the ones that they had? They took their daughters? Canaanites, Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and the Amorites. <laughs> I told you, I said they all went back, right? What does he say about it? And Caleb stilled the people toward Moses and said, we should go up at once and possess it for we are all well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they're stronger than we. What? And they spread an evil report of the land which they had spied out and the children of saying, the land through which we have passed to spy it out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. What men were of great stature? Amorite, Perizzite, Canaanite, Jebusites, all right? Hittites, they were all of great stature, right? Why are they of great stature? And what were they doing? They were cannibalists. Just like Jesus said it would be in the, this day here that we're coming into now. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Where they were what? They were marrying and giving into marriage and they were drinking right and everybody thinks modern day baptist preachers run around and said oh yeah you know that's what they were doing they were they were eating and they were drinking you know they they just had bad moral vowels uh, uh bad morals and they were uh uh they were getting drunk and and they were marrying and divorcing a lot well, if you look at the book of Enoch, we find out that they were drinking human blood and they were what? They were sleeping with the fallen angels and bringing forth children by them. And then what does he say here in verse 33? And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Enoch, right? Et a Nephilim. Now I want you to notice something. Now there's a Yod right there. And he says, B'nai Enoch, and Anak comes from, Anak doesn't come from the Nephilim, friends. He comes from the Nephilim. So the, 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 the old Jews that put in these vowels for the Masoretic text were incorrect when they put the vowels in this place. Because here we have the Yod. Over here, there is no Yod between the Fe and the Lamed. Why is there no, why is there no Yod there? Because he was not, all right, Anak was not a Nephilim. He was, or well, he's a Nephilim, but his father was a Nephilim. He was a fallen angel. That's why. So when these people of the land that they came into, the Hittites, Perzites, Ammonites, etc., and they're all giants and they're doing cannibalism and everything else, just like it was in the days of, uh, uh, of Noah, we find out that the Levites married in amongst those same people. They took the daughters. By the way, the house of Israel took sons and daughters, and they committed the same acts. But in this case, the Levites only took the daughters. That's why in Revelation, it says here in chapter 14, excuse me, these are they which were not defiled with women. He's not just talking about any women. He was talking about Nephilim women. He's talking about these women that had that polluted blood. It was a bloodline. Women are not, don't defile a man. Your lust may defile you, but a woman is not going to defile you. If you get married and you have children and everything, that's just as righteous as they come. Doesn't make women bad. For they were virgins. See? Now that might be argued that they had not been with women or anything, you know? Okay, that's fine. But they're virgins. All right. I take that as being their virgins. What? They're not defiled with their false doctrines. That's another way you could take it as well. 
See, not corrupted with Talmudic doctrines, not corrupted with a nephilim, because that is what a nephilim doctrine, this Talmudic doctrine. Jesus even said it. What did he say? We just read it a few moments ago. Where was it at? Matthew. Um, was it Matthew 23? I about said it was there, right? He said, you, you, oh, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go on yourselves. Now that you suffer them that are going to enter into it, or, or the, the, them that are entering to go in. Because why? You got false doctrines in your Talmud. Oh, wow. That's not the only one, friends. Let me show you what else it says here. They were the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. How can you be, if you're going to put the 144,000 in this day here, it ain't a first fruit. Might be a second or third or fourth. The first fruits were the very first ones that came on the day of Pentecost. There's your first fruits. In fact, I'll prove that to you. What was it? I think it's in the book of Romans. Right, Romans chapter 8, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Glory to God. Even we ourselves groan with ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that seen is not hope for what a man seeth by what doth he yet hope for it. They were the first fruits. James also bear records of that too. You want two for a witness? I'll give you two. On his own will beget he us the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Oh, glory to God. James is there. He knows what a first fruit is. That's what a first fruit is. Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Oh, wow. There's your house of Israel coming in. House of Israel. Listen. I know many people, you want to, you say, oh, I believe I'm a descendant of the house of Israel today. I find out that I got in my DNA, I got this or I got that. That's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You're written in there too. You're written over here in Revelation chapter seven. When John gets down to that group, he didn't recognize. See, the angel has him. He said, you know who these are? He said, oh, thou knowest, sir. No, he don't know who you are. When it says which a uh, number which a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, in other words, all the Gentiles, not just the Gentiles, that kindreds is all tribes and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb of God, clothed with right robes and palms in their hands. There's where you come in at. You don't got to go back over to Israel. All these scriptures being twisted and mixed up and everything to fit the doctrines they got. All oh, that ain't all though. Watch what else happened. In their mouth was found no guile. I love that one right there. For they are without fault before the throne of God. In their mouth was found no guile. Wow. You know where that's at? Let's see, that's Jesus said that one. Over here in the book of John, chapter one. Philip found in the thing I said in him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him, and he said of him, Behold, what? An Israelite indeed. What? Let me get it out from my, I'm sure my head's probably covering that up. Indeed, in whom is no guile. Oh, glory to God. That first fruit, it was those that had no guile in them. Wow. Now I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, and tongue. And whoa, 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 whoa. Here it is. Glory to God. That's their message. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. They were going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the Gentiles and to the Jews and every tongue. See, because John saw that group that no man could number. Well, that first fruits are the ones that took the gospel to the entire world. Now, let me just share something with you. Right now, you got this major movement with Jonathan Kahn and Yixak Shapira and now the Graham crusade people have jumped in on this bandwagon and, and you got the people of Hagee and, and all these other big names out there. And everybody's so excited about, oh, the state of Israel and, and these are biblical prophecies coming to pass. Everyone are lying to you. I don't say they don't sincerely believe it. I'm sure they do. And my desire is God would wake them up. 
but they everyone are lying to you. Maybe you should send this video to these men and women involved in it as well. You got uh, Miss Moore, you got Michelle Bachman and a whole bunch of others, every one of them going right into apostasy and leading the world to a lie. All because they believe this little group there that's running the state of Israel are the true children. They believe that these prophecies, maybe they don't realize that uh, Schofield and Darby were actually, I, I hear Schofield, what was he? <laughs> I don't want to say what, I, what, I was, what I've heard, but we'll just leave it at this here. He wasn't, he wasn't a believer. Yet you believe his footnotes anyway, don't you? He was a plant put in there. They have infiltrated more plants. Satan is a slick little guy. And just as he got Adam and Eve to partake of that fruit, he's got this pe these same people eating from that tree they ought not be eating of. Let me just share a couple other things with you. I want to show something to you. You know, God put Israel away, the house of Israel away in divorce. Um, and I've made a statement on that before. Boy, that kind of irritates a lot of people too. Let me see if I find this so first. Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter three. You see, because the only grounds of divorce is fornication. It's adultery. If your wife, your husband were to cheat on you, you have a right to put them away. Because that's what that's the only scripture. Now God does He hates divorce. We know this according to Malachi. He hates it. And even in Jeremiah chapter three, God puts away Israel, but He's wanting her to come back. We're talking about the house of Israel, saying, "If a man put away his wife and she go from him, become another man's, may he return unto her again. Will not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, and wouldest thou yet return to me?" Saith the Lord. You know, under the law, I don't think you're supposed to return. But when God put Israel away, he still wanted her back. I want to ask you a question. I want you to just think about this. I'm going to word this a little differently than what I said when I was in June. So I want you to think about it. If you, as a man, your wife were to commit adultery and you divorce her because of what she did, She's now considered a divorced woman. What does that make you as a man? God doesn't do his, his business any different. Just think about it. Lift up thine eyes into the high hills and see where hast thou not been lain with. By the ways hast thou sat for them. So, so as an Arabian in the wilderness and thou hast polluted the land with thy harlotries and with thy wickedness. Therefore, the showers have been withheld and there hath been no latter rain, yet thou hast harlot's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Jesus Christ's message was former and latter rain. See, God wanted to give her the former and latter rain, but it was withheld. Didst thou not just now cry unto me, my father, thou art the friend of my youth? Will he bear grudge forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken, but hast done evil things and hast had thy way. And the Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel did? She went up upon every high mountain under every leafy tree and there played the harlot. That there's a There's a subliminal message there for you if you pay attention to what's going on. And I said, after she had done all these things, she will return unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And so in, his, in, in the book of Ezra, we find out she did the same thing. And I saw when for as much as backsliding Israel had committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorcement that yet treacherous Judah, her sister, feared not, but she also went and played the harp. She sure did. And it came to pass 
through the lightness of her harlotry, that the land was polluted. She committed adultery with stones and with stocks. That word is not stocks. It is ha'ets. She committed adultery with the stone and with the tree. And yet for all this, her sister, her treacherous sister, Judith, not Returned unto me with her whole heart, but vainly saith, Oh, the Lord, oh, glory to God, the Lord, the Lord. Let me show you the adultery that he's talking about here. Let's go to Deuteronomy, uh, I'm sorry, Leviticus 18. I want to focus on verse 21, but then you really got to understand 21 by looking at the verses above and below. The entire chapter of Leviticus 18 is dealing with adulterous acts. All right. No, let's start with verse 19. Thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is impure by her uncleanness. Thou shalt not lie carnally with, a na- with, your, with, with, with your neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Then we read verse 21. Thou shalt not give any of thy seed, in other words, your children, to set them apart to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Then it jumps back to verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It's an abomination. Thou shalt not lie with any beast to defile thyself. All these things are sexual sins. And then he talks about giving your seed to set it apart to Molech. Do you not understand what he's talking about? That's passing your fire, your children through the fire to Molech. I think Deuteronomy is what this one is here, 18. Let not, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord. Okay, no, that's not it either. I apologize. I got it somewhere and I forget exactly. Maybe we'll look back at Deuteronomy though. See, it is an 18. Uh, well, yeah, okay. I do have this here. I knew I had it for a reason. For, for whosoever doeth these things in abomination of the Lord, let me just see. One, yeah, yeah, here we go. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, right? Pass through the fire. One that uses divination, a soothsayer, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer. This is how they got those Nephilim here to begin with. Do you understand that? That's how they got them here. Um, I'm sitting here, just give me, yeah, here we, here we go, right here. You're not to take or I'm saying in English, his son or his daughter, the Baesh. Okay? You're not to allow them to go literally into the fire. But see, that's not a fire like you think, because notice what they're doing. A charmer or one that consulteth a ghost or familiar spirit. See, for whosoever doeth these things is an abomination of the Lord, because of these abominations, the Lord thy God is driving them out from before thee. There's one thing those people had in common. They were all mingled with Nephilim bloodline. And they figured out how to bring those fallen angels back in. I think this whole project with CERN and things like that is the exact same thing. And I know for a fact from my own insiders that this project of bringing forth fallen angel babies into this day is real. So he goes down as he gets further. See, for these nations that thou art disposed as hearkens unto soothsayers and to diviners, but for thee the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. See, a prophet will the Lord thy God raise up unto thee from the midst of thee and of thy brethren liken unto me for him you shall hearken. All right. Now, this, I know why I had verse 16 highlighted now. It's very, very important. According to all that thou didst desire in the Lord thy God and Horeb in the day of the assembly saying, let not, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. You see, they knew all right, they knew about the great fire of God. All right, here it is. Vet ha esh ha gadola azod lo ha era od velo amot. What was it? See, God was hidden behind this pillar of fire. It's not a physical fire. You understand? 
And so these diviners and these soothsayers, that's what he's talking about, about. Don't give them over into the fire. It wasn't a physical fire like you think of. I mean, I don't doubt that they were sacrificing their children also on the altar of Baal. I understand that. But this was not that. That's why he shows you right here. Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. They were fearful of that. But they figured out a way to get to those fallen angels. And it, it appeared to look the same way. That's why they thought it was true. That's why they thought it was real. And they brought them fallen angels back into this world after the flood. That's why we find in the book of Numbers 13 that the last verse there, that Anak, he was from a fallen angel and his children were called Nephilim and they were giants in the land and they had committed adultery with them and the house of Israel was guilty of the exact same thing. That's why we find in Jeremiah, we also find in Ezekiel the same, thou hast built thy lofty place at every head of every way and has made thy beauty an, an abomination has opened thy feet to every one that passed by and multiplied thy harlotries. When he talks about that they bowed down to the to, to the stone and to the tree, you know, they, they figured out how to get through and they brought those fallen angels in. And that's why God put her away. God didn't just put the house of Israel away just because, oh, she was spiritually sinning. No, she brought fallen angels into this realm. And just like Ezra, Ezra, listen, the house of Judah was on the verge of divorce as well, had it not been that Christ came for redemption. And that's why we find out that in the book of Revelation that they're not defiled with women. They did, they weren't, these are not the ones that were defiled out of the house of Israel. See, it shows that not all the house of Israel went into sin. Not all the house of Judah went into the sin. They were what? They were not defiled with women, but they were what? They were the first fruits unto God. These were the ones that kept pure. These were the ones that were waiting for the coming of the Mashiach. That's what the 144,000 were. You talk about, you know, when they say Christianity is Judeo-Christianity, okay? The only thing that we have in relationship to what it was 2,000 years ago is that all 12 tribes had a first fruits and not just the 12 apostles, but the 144,000 took the gospel into the entire planet Earth. And if you want to put yourself as part of a remnant of, of, of one of the tribes there, yes, you are there as well, all right? And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel preaching to them that dwell upon the earth, right? Oh, wow. So yes, you can fall into that category when you're in that great multitude because see, John doesn't know who we are. We may be from one of the tribes. You might be from one of those tribes, but not there, there were no lost tribes. They were all back. And clearly the book of Acts demonstrates that all the tribes were back. And let me just, in closing, share with you from the book of Hosea, I believe it is. Uh, yes, Hosea chapter six. And I used to put this in the future as well. But here it is again. After two days, will he revive us? This is the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37 of the Valley of Dry Bones, which the Dead Sea Scrolls clearly identified that in Ezekiel of Dry Bones there, when Ezekiel asked the question in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the verse we don't have in our own Bible there, he asked God, when will this be? And he tells him, when the tree bends over and stands up. That's when it will be. And Christ was the tree of life. And when he bent over, when he died on the cross, and but when he resurrected, and that's what we found. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise up that we may live in his presence. That was those that had all died, thinking all their hope was gone. Because remember, we find out in Matthew, what is it, 27 or chapter 28, that many of the saints arose they appeared into the living there. Oh, wow. Let us know eagerly to strive to know the Lord. His going forth as sure as the morning. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain that watereth the earth. He was both former and latter rain. O oh, Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O oh, Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud and as a dew that early passeth away. See, they didn't have anything good about them. Just a little bit, they did they do all right, but then they'd mess up again. Therefore have I hewn thee by the prophets, and I have slain thee by the words of my mouth, and thy judgment goeth forth as the light. See, for I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. See, He wanted that mercy. 
That's what he was looking for, was Christ. Christ for them. He was the hope of glory. And it was his message that they took to the world. I trust this is a blessing to you. And by the way, too, I wanted to share with you. You know, you guys, I get all kinds of things in. I, even for the Mormons. I, so if you're Mormon and you happen to write me and stuff, you send me a book of Mormon. I got so many of them, I can't even tell you how many I got now. Uh, but I, I don't I, I don't agree with uh, the doctrine of Joseph Smith. I don't. But uh, just so you know, because if you feel you're Mormon and sometimes people send me things like that, uh, I definitely don't need it. But uh, Rick Lange, wonderful brother. I know Rick, he's up in Tennessee. Uh, he sent me some of his DVDs there. And uh, I actually, I, I found also Rick is actually on uh, YouTube. I can't play it because they'd say, oh, I'm impersonating. But you can hear some of this uh, of Rick's stuff there on YouTube there. I don't know. Maybe Rick has on there. Uh, uh, maybe Rick will put in his information. Let me just share. Uh, Rick's got his email on here. 215, his name, Rick Lange, R-I-C-K-L-A-N-G-E at gmail.com. Rick has done a lot of beautiful, different little singing DVDs that I think would bless you if you like. Just simple, uh, true, heartfelt gospel. He did that. And then, uh, and this was really a blessing here. We had a friend there sent us actually pasta. This is uh, it's kind of cool to get that whole box of it, especially we're going on at the time where, you know, telling how things are going to be. And then uh, Sister Patty uh, Ogden sent us this book right here that she did on uh, Shemgar and the Ox Goat. I thought that was really nice as well. God bless you guys. Thank you. I can't always share everything. I get, get all kinds of books and stuff from people. Um, and something simple like that because the children's book there and, and the artist she had, just a magnificent artist. Uh, there's some beautiful artwork there, but I think it's great for children to have things like this. I like that so much. So uh, Patty Ogden, again, uh, Shemgar and the Ox Goad, uh, you might want to look that up. I think it'd be a blessing for your children if you're wanting to read to them, especially we're going to have time very soon where a lot of time you get to read more. Read, our, read your Bible, though. Definitely read your Bible. The love of Jesus Christ. Focus on the Gospels. As my wife always says, memorize the Gospels of Jesus Christ. No telling what they may do in the future. So anyway, uh, God bless you all. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. And don't forget to our other channels. Um, brand new tube. And I know some people are having trouble getting on these. They're working on this. I'll have in the description below all the different channels we're on, but brand new tube is very important to be on. Also, iConnectFX.com. That was Event Master FX, but they did change the name. I, iConnectFX.com. Um, and, you know, get subscribed there. We don't know how long before they take us down here again. And, of course, on YouTube, um, you also want to know that, uh, you want to be able to look at, uh, let me just put this in real quick, uh, fact news network. And all this is in the description below along with others we have, here we go. Fact news network. That's what it looks like. We've only got 26,000 subscribers there. You want get subscribed here. Cause if you're stuck on YouTube and don't want to go anywhere else, you need to be on this channel as well. We don't have any strikes on this channel. Most things here don't get published here that are real dangerous. But I'm putting also that message about the Messiah here because I don't know. They might want to say, oh, we're going to take it down because you're revealing where our Messiah is. No, we're going to do it where we think it's safe at. So definitely uh, subscribe to these places here. And your support is very, very important to this ministry. Um, and so I can't uh, encourage enough that we thank you for your support of this ministry. Uh, our mailing address right here, Danoon Institute. You can also do it out into Stephen Benoon if you want, but Danoon Institute, Champions Gate Boulevard, number 442, Champions Gate, Florida, 33896. You can also donate online. Uh, it's another way you can do that. And we appreciate that. A little behind on writing people because unfortunately we're trying to get moved to Tennessee. Um, I did do an update on this asteroid things. And I know there's some people that don't believe those things. And I respect that. Um, you know, 
My biggest issue on moving, though, is what's coming after this election. And I pray to God that things don't happen as what I've been told. But I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned over what they're trying to do with this virus thing. That's another thing that bothers me. Um, when it comes to this thing about near-Earth objects, things like that, asteroids, to me, it doesn't matter where you go when it comes to that. We just need to be in Christ. And I do believe that when this finally does begin to fully happen, it'll be the judgment of Almighty God for these devils of what they're doing. So don't look at, this is not fear mongering. You know, my heart's desire is to help people. That's my sole desire is to help people. Um, and these, the insiders that I have, they're not God. They don't, they're not prophesying. And generally, as they put it to me, they they give you the probability based on what they know. Um, a lot of things are coming, though, they are going to affect the church. A lot of things. And I'm going to be sharing that information with you. I have some other news sources that I'm working with. that will try to get that information out to you because it's vital. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Again, check out the description below. I don't know if I did it in this one here, but I'll just see. Uh, let's see. No, it's just the regular links, but... Uh, a lot of the, if you look in the videos here on these, uh, let me just real quick, I'll show you what I mean there. Uh, because sometimes people don't understand and the people are like, oh, where is that at? I don't know where that's at. So let me just find real quick an older video here uh, from like right before we were thrown off the um, thing there. I think this is a good good example right here. Um, Dang, uh, when I was, okay. If you go into the show more, all right, right here, sensitive information. This also includes the app. We're on the app. Now, there is an issue with the app. And and Bill, if you listen to this program, forgive me, brother. Um, I had a fraud issue that happened on my card that supports this. I'm waiting for that card to come in so I can get the app fixed. So we, we may have some issues on the app. I don't know of as of yet. I haven't had a chance to look at it because I just got back in here to, uh, to the house here. But I will work on that. But you have uh, Patreon. We do do we do videos there on Patreon that don't always show up every, in other places. Uh, Event Masters, which is now iConnect. I'll have to update the link on that. iConnect.com. Uh, uh, so you have the link to that. You have our other YouTube channels, Rise Up Children of God, Back News Network. And Yana's not going to be up very much longer either. That's She's got two strikes, just like we got two strikes. And then Danoon Institute is our teaching channel. This video will be on Danoon Institute as well. All right. And then Brand New Tube. All the links are there. In fact, on Brand New Tube, if you don't use the link, all right, there you go. I know you couldn't see it. If you don't actually use the link that's provided, you'll end up on somebody else's channel. All right. Always look for that because people copy our videos all the time. You know, if they're doing it with good intention, you know, they're not doing it to try to, you know, just be retarded out there. Forgive me, I shouldn't say that either because, you know, my sister, my, excuse me, my aunt had Down syndrome. I don't mean it that way, but you know what I mean. In other words, they're just acting foolish. Um, I, I don't mind so much, but they do copy our videos, put them out everywhere, and then people get confused. They, they, they find the channel, but they don't realize it's not our channel. So they don't get to see everything or hear everything. So you need the actual link for brandnewtube.com forward slash at. you got to have that at sign, Israeli News Live. All right, that's our channel on Brand New Tube. Anyway, thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live.